Everywhere I go in this country, I am seeing something I have never seen before. They didn't prepare me for this in all my years of uh, graduate school at Yale and all my 15 years of teaching at Notre Dame. Nobody said at the turn of the century, the change of the millennium all across America in every walk of life, people are going to start becoming philosophers. People are asking suddenly deep and challenging questions about things they've long taken for granted. What is true success? How can I have more fulfillment in my work? How can I get more balance in my life? You know, what's my legacy in this world supposed to be? I'm being asked these questions. It's not just the baby boomers having midlife crisis all at the same time. I'm being asked these questions by people in their 70s, people in their 80s, people in their 20s and 30s. Everywhere I go across the country, it's just started a few years ago. As a matter of fact, do you remember uh, the Australian Olympics several years ago? The night before the Olympics started in Australia, I got a telephone call live from Australian National Radio. Professor Morris, why are the biggest companies in America suddenly turning to you, a philosopher? Why are all Americans becoming philosophers? I said, I'm not sure. Um, Maybe Winston Churchill once explained it when he said you can always depend on Americans to do the right thing once they've exhausted every other possibility. <laughs> Haven't tried everything else, people are turning to ancient wisdom. We're going to take a little time this morning and turn to some of the greatest ancient wisdom there is on the topic of true success. Now this is one of my favorite topics to speak on all over the world and I've got to tell you I remember vividly the first time I was ever asked to speak on the topic. Uh, it, was, uh, it was 20 years ago at Notre Dame. I was sitting in my office doing what a philosopher does. I was thinking. I got a phone call from a big group of really successful people asking me to come and speak to them on the topic of success. I had no idea why they were calling me. I didn't teach on it at Notre Dame. I hadn't written a book on it at that time. I, but well, these were really successful people. I thought my wife would be proud of me. I'd go home and tell her. And uh, you know, philosophers have absolutely no schedule whatsoever. So I jumped up from my desk. I, I went running out the door of my office. Uh, the phone rang again. I jumped back, picked it up by some cosmic coincidence. It was a publishing company asking me what I consider writing a book on success, the very same topic. I ran to the Notre Dame football stadium where I parked my car, I drove the two miles home, I came bursting through the front door, I said to my wife, Mary, you won't believe it, within 60 seconds I just got two phone calls. A group of really successful people want me to speak to them on success. A publisher wants me to write a book on success. I thought she was going to glow with pride. She just looked real confused. She said, wait, don't you have to be a success before you can speak and write on it? I said, hey, I'm not going to get hung up on a technicality. I'm a student to the wisest people who've ever lived. I'm going back to Socrates, Plato, Aristotle, the folks y'all named. I'm going to go through the centuries across the cultures and ask a question. Is there a universal framework for success recognized by the wisest people in every culture and secondly, applicable to every facet of our lives? You all, I read hundreds of books, thousands of essays, the most research I'd ever done on any topic. I was absolutely stunned to discover there are just seven utterly universal conditions for success. I brought everybody a little gift this morning, a little laminated wallet card you'll find on your place setting somewhere. On one side of that card are the seven universal conditions for success that are going to structure our brief time together this morning. I call them the seven C's of success for, for reasons that will be obvious if you glance at your card. The first one comes to us from Aristotle.